So let's check out this uh, mini hobby model. I've been receiving a lot of uh, reviews lately from my colleagues and buddies about how crappy this kit is. And uh, we'll see. Yep, one red flag is the motor, motorized model kit. I think that the Mia, the older version of the Mia, has this motorized version kits also. Um, once you have a motor, you can see that the scale is not going to be as as exact and accurate. And another red flag is how miserable the fit is, starting out with the lower and upper hull. The turret fit looks pretty awful as well. The gaps seems pretty obvious. Yeah. Well, there it goes. The kit reminds me not of the Tamiya, but rather the old trumpeter kit. The ones that has white boxes. It has the same plastic quality and mold, including the seams and flashes. The upper and lower hull fit is quite miserable really. I just can't seem to have a handle on this. Yup, an awful gap on the glassy. Yep, here's the penultimate surprise, the infamous sticker grill. It's just showing you how this works, see? It doesn't really work for me. Thumbs down, sticker really. So I had to use the mesh, the, the uh, one provided by the kit instead. To come up with a decent uh, frame for the grills, I used masking tape, but uh, to have a better framing, I'd rather you use uh, a lid foil. For the turret surface, I used a two, uh, two-part putty to seal off the gaps and seams and then sanded it off smoothly just to cover uh, the gaps. And there it goes. Hmm. 
Attaching the ERAs, explosive reactive armors. Completely uh, as per the instruction manual. So once everything is glued and assembled and um, parts put in place, this is how the kit is going to look like. And no photo etch. At its raw form. At its bare minimum. So, it's high time now that I destroy this miserable worst kit. They say I'm gonna do a burned and destroyed tank representation. Slicing up some parts uh, using a Dremel tool here and there in order to depict a really really damaged tank. Yep, cut this one off. Now this one, I'm um, using a food packaging aluminum foil. This will serve as my uh, rubber guards or mud guards to depict now a, a, a torn off rubber guard. I also used the part of aluminum foil, varnished it the shape of the what do you call this part? Uh, a track mud guard. There was a reference photo that I used that uh, this particular part was uh, protruding upwards. Here I'm drilling a hole. Uh, the searchlight. One, I, I've seen a reference photo of the tank uh, once burnt, it became hollow. The, the glass and the light bulb is off, just the hole. Now in this this part of the build, I will, I'm I'm melting it using a, as you see, a light lighter, and then bent bent the sh the shape. At this stage, I'm trying to mark off using the visual layout, marking the tank on the styrofoam, and then making some necessary carvings to make a depression uh, of the soil. Placing an additional styro just to make the tank uh, look elevated or angular. And on the freshly placed groundwork, I'm already using some of the uh, fillers such as uh, styrofoam, a blue foam, some sand for the ground texture and then trying to place it uh, for the visual layouting again. 
So in here I'm going to again melt and bend to shape the worn out or burned wheels. At this stage you already have an idea how the damaged tank will look like before painting. Here we go with the painting process. I use several colors, acrylic colors, for the uh, the initial paint. One is orange, one is red, and one is red brown. Mix them according to your preference in terms of uh, shade or use or contrast. So I'm now applying the first coat of paint which will then be uh, sprayed over with the hairspray and then painted over with the subsequent paints like the green and the sooth black and rust So to have this effect, you'll apply layers and layers of paint. First is base coat, you see clearly it's almost like a hull red. Then of course the orange mix, which will represent the rust. Subsequently, another layer of uh, higher contrast orange paint. And after this, uh, you will dry it and then mist on and hairspray because the chipping effects will now take place Now, a lot of people have been asking me, what is the right amount of uh, chipping fluid or hairspray that you need to put into the model for you to have an effective chipping effect? Actually, I don't even have an answer, an accurate answer to that. So in this case, I just try to put in according to my preference and so far as like based on my judgment. It looks pretty good enough and soaked enough, so that'll do. And then the drying time will be a little bit faster on my side. It's sort of like a, a wet on wet uh, layering of paint and then soon thereafter once I say for this color I apply the green one I immediately had to put the uh, water again to have the ha hairspray activated and then started chipping away but then again it, it's not to my desired effect because it, it, it took me some time and it was really hard against now from uh, with my previous uh, hairspray techniques or uh, chipping fluid it was much faster i don't know what happened to this build now you can see the black suit I'm spraying over again it's a wet on wet 
so these are the typic the typical these are the typical color combinations uh, if you want to represent something that is burned it normally has the black suit and in the ashes so you need to have textures and then of course bits and pieces of white pigments later on so most of the reference photos I've seen uh, of a burned tank uh, really has some white white suits also com uh, combined with the black ones and of course the regular rusting effect Even after you uh, painted the colors, the initial colors already, it's not enough for you to simply uh, get contented, contented with the original paint. Once the weathering and the chipping and all the other, you know, chemicals that have been put into, you need to somehow re-add bits and pieces of the paint over it. Does that make sense? Um, by having some contrasts so you, uh, as an initial painting step you might have say a, a, a darker portion of the green color or Russian green and then you need to highlight them using different contrasts of green using different uh, paint mediums you can use animals you can use uh, acrylic provided that they're they're still wet and they're still uh, uh, you'll be able to put off the excess using or by rubbing a uh, cotton buds and slowly stifle a little bit of paints here and there just to add the difference of contrast and colors of the main green color that'll add some attraction or visual interest Once all the painting highlights, uh, contrasts, and different layerings and chipping have been done, it's important that you need to apply a pin wash just to add depthness and uh, additional detail. Because during the initial weathering and painting, some some of the nooks and crannies are covered with the uh, the base paints and the original colors. So uh, having to use pin wash really adds depthness and detail and savviness and a sort of finale uh, for your painting process one must use effectively the pigments a lot of people now uh, lately seldom use pigments but you know for this kind of effect you can use the pigments to your advantage so in this case, I'm applying the black pigment to, to add texture to the suit effect as well as the white pigments again, slowly dropping them carefully, not to overdo it. Pigments add texture. Voila!
For diorama enthusiast, the same loving, tender loving care that you do with your painting process, assembling and the kit, you have to do it with your diorama uh, and the diorama base as well, including the groundwork. So with the same amount, just to make the details pop out, you can use the pin washing and in this case the old school dry brushing to your advantage. It'll add depth, it'll add detail, visually, and then um, add some foliage, grass, dried leaves to make it more earthly or earthy. To add contrast to an otherwise metal destroyed tank is nature. And at this point, I'd like to thank you for bearing with me and reaching up to this point. And uh, I'd like to make a shout out to, again, Nori Honda, a good old friend of mine. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Yowza.